What is up guys, Julian Mikkel here of Social Vignerons. Welcome back to another one video. This is episode 31 of the Tasting with Julian series. And today we are going to Bordeaux once again. We are going to talk and discuss and learn about the wines of Saint Julian. Yes, Saint Julian, a little bit like me. So you have to know that Saint Julian is one of the top, top appellations in the Bordeaux region, but it is the smallest uh, famous appellation of the Medoc area. I mean, there are some smaller areas uh, like Listrac and Moulis, and I actually made a video about Listrac Medoc. So if you want to know about the lesser known wines of Medoc, uh, go and check my video about Listrac. But if we're focusing on the very famous appellations of Medoc, like Margot, Poyac, and Saint Estefe, Saint Julien is the smallest appellation. That is why it is not necessarily all that famous uh, out there and all that recognized as much as Margot and the Poyac, uh, for example, but uh, many, many uh, classified grouse, uh, classified chateaus in 1855. And again, if you want to learn about what is the 1855 classification, go and check this video, which explains everything. There are quite a lot of uh, classified chateaus. In fact, 95% of all the vineyards in Saint Julien are owned by classified chateaux. So that is quite, quite impressive. So you should definitely continue watching this video and learn a little bit more about Saint Julien. So Saint Julien, and I'll try to show you a map, Saint Julien is right in between the Margot Appellation, so south of Medoc, just north of the city of Bordeaux, and between Margot and Poyac, a little bit at the north and uh, then further north will be uh, Saint Estef. So Saint Julien is sort of nestled there. It's only about 900 hectares uh, of vineyards. So that's about 2,200 acres of vineyards. So a relatively small appellation. And in terms of style, it also kind of sits a little bit in between the refined, very elegant, floral, Medoc Cabernet Sauvignon style that you find in Margot, uh, the archetypical one being Chateau Margot, and the more fuller bodied uh, wines that are found uh, up north in Poyac and in Saint Estefs, the wines of Latour, Mouton Rochelle, etc. So Saint Julien uh, sits uh, right in between. We are talking obviously gravelly soils, uh, majority of Cabernet Sauvignons, uh, vineyards overlooking the river, the Gironde uh, River, which creates a bit of a microclimate. It's a sunny area like is Bordeaux, but it's in the middle of the waters between the river and the ocean, with, which moderates uh, the heat and helps uh, refining the style of Saint Julien like all of the other Medoc wines. So today we are going to be tasting, I am going to be tasting the wines by the, by, by the Barton uh, family. They are famous owners uh, in the area. They actually settled, uh, the Barton uh, were an Irish family that settled uh, in France around the 18th uh, century and they famously started together with another family, the Guestier, a very famous and powerful, um, um, important and influential negoce, so, so trade house in Bordeaux that is called and still exists uh, as the Barton and Guestier family. So they bought, initially they bought in the 18th century or maybe early 19th century, they bought this property that was called Langoa, uh, which has a beautiful, superb, classic, classic chateau. And uh, so they renamed it Langoa, ba Langoa Barton after their name. And a bit later on, they managed to buy one of the some of vineyards that belonged to the Leoville Lascaz property. You have to know that in Leo, that in Saint Julien, the Leoville wines are some of the most famous ones. So we're talking Leoville Poiferet, Leoville Lascaz, and Leoville Barton. So a bit later on, after buying Langua Barton, they put their hands on vineyards that, that would to be later classified as second growth, and they produced the wine of uh, Leoville Barton. So very famous, very well established, classified growth, third growth here, second growth here. So very super interesting uh, wines that we have to taste today. So first off, I will be starting with Chateau Langoa Barton with vintage 2009. So 
2009 very reputable warm generous uh, vintage that is um, generally very well beloved uh, out there because it's generous it's open it's ready to drink at a relatively young age but it still has a lot of potential and it's open it's fruity it's generous it's ripe it's gorgeous so um, see how Langlois Barton did on that vintage mm, yeah it is generous there's a lot of black cherry it's quite spicy as well it's a little bit ashy there's some vanilla dark cocoa it's quite spicy and uh, black pepper, it's lifted as well. So rather classic style, it's a little bit introvert. 2009 is young for a Bordeaux wine, for Saint Julien. Those wines are meant to be aged 10, 15, perhaps 20 years, especially for a Grand Cru Classé in a great vintage like this one. Mm. Mm. Wow, so here we have a wine that has a very, really two different facets. There's a big, generous, warming element of fruit, so the blackberry that I was talking about before, blackberry jam and dark cherry and a bit of raspberry, so that the big burst of juicy, salivating uh, blackberry, red berry flavors uh, to the profile. This is dry, very strong acidity, mineral and salty acidity. This is going to be obviously a food friendly wine. It's a little bit introvert and this whole fruitiness is surrounded by the savory, ashy, dark coffee, roasted French roast coffee, dark cocoa. So it is quite uh, powerful and pungent and generous and alcoholic. I mean, you can feel that this was a warm uh, vintage, but there's also the typical savoriness of Medoc, the ashy uh, savoriness from the Cabernet that is aged in barrels and in new barrels. So this is a very complex, generous and rounded wine. This is still a young wine. You can keep this for 15 or 20 years easily. It will keep getting better, better and better. Uh, developing notes of leather, notes of truffle, adding dips to the tasting experience. A fantastic wine. All the classic style of Bordeaux is in there. Wow, to me this is a 91 plus out of 100 points because it's definitely in the world class. It's long, it's balanced, it's dry, it's food friendly. You can pair this with super elegant foods, but also kind of enjoy it rather simply if you can afford it. This is a wine that retails around $80. I mean, depending on the vintage, Langlois Barton will vary between $60 and $100, depending on the vintage and how long it's been aged for. So around $80. It's an excellent age-worthy wine for $80, but you can also enjoy it now and very, very soon. But let's move on to Chateau Léoville Barton. So this is a second uh, gross, so deuxième uh, Grand Cru Classé, so just underneath the top, top uh, first gross, which are Mouton Rochal, David Rochal, Chateau Margaux, and uh, Aubryon in the Médoc. So second gross, so we're talking some of the best, best, most reputable wines in, Mar in Bordeaux uh, for the past uh, 200 uh, years. Also, and we are with vintage 2012, which is described as a classic vintage. So an excellent uh, vintage, but that was not recognized like some of the others are 2008, 2009, 2010, 2015, 2005, 2003 sometimes, or vintage 2000. Those are the great, great vintages of the Bordeaux area. 2012 is kind of in between but really 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 quite good actually but it's a bit overlooked it's a bit always like this in Bordeaux it's either considered really bad or really good and when it's in the middle people don't talk about those wines and uh, but you can generally find relatively affordable gems in those vintages that no one talk about uh, and uh, 2012 is a typical example of this underrated I mean they're not underrated but not really looked at and vintages that are not going into the books of history. So let's see how Chateau Léoville Lascaz performed on that vintage. Wow, so mo much more of an introvert wine. It's a younger wine as well, so it will take time to open up. And also the terroir here uh, is a bit more clayey. The expression is a bit more restrained. The density of tannins we expect is going to be bigger. So a wine that will take more time. It's more built to age. So a bit more introvert on the nose. 
you are still getting, and it's very, very pure, some cassis, uh, sharp, precise cassis expression, typical of the Cabernet Sauvignon, especially uh, in Medoc when it's well made. So there's a precision of fruit there that is shining through the nose that is particularly exciting. Yeah, there are, yeah, also there are obviously some oak and there a bit of vanilla, the dark uh, cocoa and the dark coffee. If you swirl the wine, ooh, the spices are coming out. They are coming out really pungently. Some nutmeg and clove and um, a bit of a nutty element to it, a bit of hazelnut. So, so this is a fascinating wine. I mean, I could spend five minutes talking to you about what it smells like. But overall, very precise and fine and refined. You can, a bit of floral element, a bit of violet, the precise fruitiness uh, to the nose as well. So, I mean, there's a lot going on. This is very, very, very exciting. Uh, can't wait to it again. Let's do that. Mm. Wow. So, this is certainly a classic, classic Bordeaux wine, classic vintage, as I was saying. It's, um, it's got the generosity of the fruit, but it's all kind of hidden because of the tannic concentration that it's got. I think this wine is just waiting for 10 years, you know, it, it just wants to say something, but it's still a bit shy because it's young. It's got so much to say, so much potential. These, the tannins are soft, they are dense, but it's keeping everything or a lot of it uh, for itself. So this is not a wine that is quite ready to drink now, but its cert quality is certainly high up there. This is a 93, perhaps a 90, well, yeah, 93 out of 100 points. I mean, we are getting into the very, very serious wines. It's not the outstanding, outstanding density that you would get uh, from uh, 95 plus wines, but it's certainly very dense and complex and long. A lot of influence from the oak. This is dry, this is ashy, uh, savory, great acidity, very complex blend, very balanced. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful wine. I mean, I would love to have a case of this uh, on my, in my cellar and open a bottle every three years. I would wait another five years before really starting to enjoy it. But from there, you can, uh, you can count on 15 years of aging and 15 years of enjoyment. This retails around $100 in the US, so we're talking about 80 euros in Europe and 70 pounds, let's say, in the UK. So, you know, it's some money for a wine, but uh, actually for the quality of this wine and the age worthiness, the complexity, the enjoyment that this is going to give, it is actually a very, very good buy. I'm just thinking, did I miss anything about uh, Saint Julien? Well, maybe let me know in the comments if there is something you wanted to know about Saint Julien. I talked about the famous uh, Leoville uh, wines that are the most fa some of the most famous in Saint Julien. There are others that are Bechevel and Ducru Bocayou. I reached out to Ducru Bocayou. They didn't want to let me try their wine, so send me a bottle, which I understand. But I hope I will have other wines from Saint Julien to taste and to share uh, with you. But Leoville Barton especially is a fantastic, fantastic wine. And I was quite impressed by the generosity, the opulence of a Langua Barton. So if you're looking for a wine that is a bit more ready to drink and a little bit more affordable, a Langua Barton is a classic, uh, expressive, powerful, pungent style of uh, Saint Julien. If you're looking at cellaring and investing in seriously into wine, Leoville Barton is an absolute winner. I'm hoping I can get to some other Leoville Poiferré and share the experience and visit with you someday. That's enough and that's it for me today. I hope you've learned a little something. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to know something more about Saint Julien. If there are wines that you would like me to cover in the area, in the Medoc. I love Medoc, as you know. That's it for me for today. I will see you soon in the wine world.